Hi, it's Gene, retired in Mexico, and we ask one question on this channel, which is, do they write them and sing them like they used to? So a lot of people, young people, old people, they think the old music is better, but I am not so sure. And today, we're going to explore uh, 30 favorite albums. This is part two. So I'm going to be counting down 15 through 1. These are my favorite albums of 2004. Not the best albums. I wouldn't. I would not uh, propose to say what's best, but these are the ones that I like. And uh, you know, there are some albums uh, from this year that were pretty highly rated that aren't on my list. Um, I was going to look those up before I started. I I think um, maybe Green Day's American Idiot came out this year, and I like that album, but it it didn't make my top 30. So it's a little bit subjective list. And when we're done with this, I'm going to put down below a Spotify playlist and I'll give you the link and you can go to my Wallbanger Reactions uh, Spotify page and play that if you so desire. So I'll, I'll make a playlist of that. So let's get into it. These are my top 15 albums of 2004. And here we go. Uh, we're going to start, let me bring up my spreadsheet. So we're going to start with Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds and his double album, Avatar Blues and the Liar of Orpheus. This is quite a literate album. Uh, I love Nick Cave, and this is a very highly rated album. Uh, Pitchfork gives it a nine. They love it. And All Music gives it four and a half. And yeah, I like it. Is it my favorite Nick Cave? No, but it's one of my maybe three or four favorite albums by, by Nick Cave. And, yeah, and uh, Avatar Blues and The Liar of Orpheus are both uh, uh, named after title. Their, their songs are the same. Those are two of the songs on the album. And yeah, there's darkness on here. There's humor, sometimes dark humor. And if you know Nick Cave, he's an he's a intelligent guy and he's a great musician. And yeah, I love this. Now, you know, this album took a little longer to get into than some of his. I wouldn't say it's the most accessible, and I don't know that I would recommend it as an entry point for Nick Cave, but man, this guy's still making great music even today, and love, love, love Nick Cave from Australia. Good stuff. Uh, coming in at number 14, this is somebody I like a lot and that I had the great privilege to see one time is uh, Patti Smith and her album Trampin'. Now, this is the new Patti Smith. This is not the old punk priestess of the old days. Um, you know, and so it, it didn't get quite as good ratings as some of her other albums, you know. So, for example, on Rate Your Music, it was rated 566. But I think this is an underrated album. This is the mature Patti Smith. Uh, not as wild, uh, more... <laughs> Let me put it this way. She's one of those artists that... She's not like Kiss that's, that still sings Christine 16 40 years later. Um, Patti Smith's music evolves. And as each decade goes by and she goes through motherhood and all these things, she changes the type of music that she's singing. When I saw her, she did some of these um, tracks in concert because I saw her after this came out and she did songs like Gandhi and they were wonderful in concert. Great band. I love Trampin'. Um, there's some sweet songs on here. And then some really out there interesting things. She's still pushing the envelope in many ways. Just not, just not in a punk vein, but lyrically, she's still pushing. And there's some pretty cool words on here. She's one of the best lyricists in rock. So Patti Smith, trampin'. Number 13, uh, the band Wilco from Chicago, A Ghost is Born. And this is an album that uh, the people had some mixed uh, opinions on. You know, for example, Pitchfork wasn't too crazy about it. But, but I like this album, I like it a lot. Um, is it 
Yankee Foxtrot Hotel, Hotel Foxtrot Yankee, Yankee Hotel Foxtrot. <laughs> I always get that one mixed up. No, it's not their number one album, but this is also when um, Nels Klein was involved in the band and um, good stuff, A Ghost Is Born. Um, you have songs like um, Handshake Drugs. Ooh, great. Um, now, the album, uh, what was it called? Via Chicago? I'm trying to think what the live album was called. It came out after this. One of the best live albums, folks. Uh, so, A Ghost Is Born. The only thing I'll say about this album is some of the songs that were done live, like Handshake Drugs, I do prefer the live version, but this is still a terrific album. I love it. Uh, Wilco really never disappoints. And so I, I, I recommend this album. Would it be my first album I hand to you? No. But uh, these songs became great live staples later on that wonderful, wonderful live album that will probably show. I don't remember if they came out in 05 or 06, but that's a live album that will probably make my top 30. Number 12, uh, another band that I got to see. Well, I've seen, yeah, seen Patti Smith, seen Wilco, and then I got to see Drive By Truckers one time. And this is their album, The Dirty South. And this is a, this is a storytelling album. And it's just really great. And this is, I, this is where I think Mike Cooley really comes into his uh, element here because Patterson Hood was always kind of the dominant songwriter and singer. Uh, but on this album, Mike Cooley steps it up, and Jason Isbell has his highest number of contributions. So they were really a three-singer, three-songwriter band at this point. And, uh, yeah, pretty well-received album, The Dirty South. Uh, they're, um, what about, Carl, is this the one with Carl Perkins' Cadillac? Yeah, <laughs> This has so many great songs on it. Um, and Mike Cooley singing about his dad playing poker in the woods. and This is the new breed of Southern rock. Really, really great stuff. If, you haven't, if you're not into the drive-by truckers, I highly recommend them. And then in the same vein, coming in at number 11, um, another sort of country-ish album, Loretta Lynn who just passed away, right? About, what, a month or two ago, we lost Loretta Lynn. This is Van Leer Rose, the album that Jack White produced and put out on his Third Man Records label. Oh, I did a feature on the song Portland, Oregon on Master Monday. Great stuff, but all the way through. And I had to listen to this. Um, I do own it somewhere, but... <laughs> I have so many CDs I usually just stream, but when I was listening to this, I had to listen to it on YouTube because it's not on Spotify, folks. So when I do a playlist, you will not be able to hear anything from here, but check it out. It's, um, she's, and she really, there's a couple songs on here that are really rock and roll. So for her, at her age, to push the envelope and do something completely different, I think it's wonderful because we think of country music as being a very conservative art form. But Loretta Lynn just went with it and trusted Jack White, and I think it was a marriage made in heaven. Those two were just perfect for each other. So number 11, Loretta Lynn, Van Leer Rose, and this was really highly rated album. Pitchfork, for example, gave this 9.3. Yeah. This was uh, critically acclaimed, and rightfully so. All right, now we're into my top ten. And remember, these are favorites. These are favorite albums. And we're going to start getting heavy on the anthologies here. So, a real mix. Um, so, number ten is someone I did a feature on in the Legacy series. I'm a big Sonic Youth fan. And the album Sonic Nurse... If you look at the rankings where I rank their albums, this was my favorite album of the 21st century. 
And I did not listen to this back in 2004. So I came around to this album later. Uh, I owned a lot of their classic albums, but I just never bothered to listen to Sonic Nurse. And boy, was I missing out. Uh, ooh, this is a great, great album. Everybody's fantastic on it. And even Lee Ronaldo, his song Stones, that's one of his best songs. I, I'm really high on that song. And Thurston Moore and Kim Gordon and everybody's just knocking it out of the park on here. I love Sonic Nurse, uh, Dripping Dream, and Kim Gordon, and the, what was it called, the Hand Cream Generation? Um, maybe I'm getting that mixed up with Corner Shop. Um, so, so, so many, many great songs. Um, highly recommend Sonic Nurse. Interesting album cover, too. Coming in at number nine is an anthology, and... This one's pretty classic stuff. I'm going with the Allman Brothers Band. Stand Back, the anthology. Two discs, covers their whole career up to that point. Although, oddly enough, I think uh, there's nothing from Hitting the Note, which had been released before this. And that's a pretty good album. They should have taken a cut or two from that. But uh, Allman Brothers Band, someone I did not care for in high school and uh, part of college. When I was a young man, I did not like the Allman Brothers Band or the Grateful Dead. I thought it was all noodling. And I came around to these bands later in my life, and now I deeply appreciate both of them. And I really like the Allman Brothers. Uh, this really just calls all their greatest tracks. If I have this, two-disc anthology, and then the double Fillmore East. I got four discs of Allman Brothers, and that's all I need. That's plenty. Uh, never did get to see them in concert because I, you know, I wasn't a fan, and I came around to them late. Uh, kind of wish I'd seen them. Uh, I'm sure they were one of the better live bands. Stand Back the Anthology. It's got, it's got everything. Whippin' and Post and Melissa and, you know, and uh, of course, famous songs like Ramblin' Man, but uh, but then it goes through their later albums after their golden period and takes some of the best tracks from those albums, and yeah, I think it's sweet. All right, number eight is a box set, and um, this one I've got behind me, so I'm going to pull it down from the shelf and show it to you here. This is from Rhino Records. And this is called Left of the Dial. Dispatches from the Underground. This is a four CD box set. And this has got uh, what you would call, I don't know, it's just kind of the best collection of 80s music, I think, because it's deep, deeper tracks, not just the hits. So you've got people you'd expect on here like uh, Joy Division, uh, but then other uh, people like Sisters of Mercy, Prefab Sprout, you've got, um, should have brought my glasses, oh, I do have a pair of glasses here, but anyway, you got the Psychedelic Furs on here, Bauhaus, um, and then really obscure bands like The Liars, and you got Camper Van Beethoven on here, take the skinheads bowling, <laughs> and uh, suicidal tendencies, I mean, look at look at all this, the Cocteau Twins, if I said that correctly, Happy Mondays is on here, which is still technically an 80s band, uh, before, you know, they really blew up in the early 90s, but look at this, the Descendants, the Pogues, got some paisley on here like three o'clock uh just really want uh, the smiths lone justice ministry what do we have here by ministry we have stigmata by ministry it's really a great collection on rhino um we have got um about maybe oh 
24, I don't know, all, 75 songs on here perhaps. Really, really awesome stuff. Left of the Dial, Dispatches from the 80s Underground. That's the um, proper way uh, to put it. Uh, Well-received album and love it. All right, coming in at number seven, somebody you all know I'm a fan of, Love My Bjork. And this is the album Medulla, or Medulla. I'm not, she's got the little umlaut over it, so I'm not sure how it's pronounced. But uh, it's a great album. So this isn't, um, this is an album that not everybody loved. Um, Pitchfork gave it an 8.4, so they liked it quite a bit. Metacritic, 84, so same score basically. So you're talking about a four and a half star album and I would put this at four and a half pushing five stars. Um, when I get into the top six, those are my five star albums. So this one might still be four and a half stars, but it's a strong four and a half stars. And, uh, you know, right off the top of my head, I'm trying to think of the names of the tracks on here, but I did a ranking of uh, Bjork, including my top 10 songs, and there are some tracks from this album. Uh, I love Medulla, I love the album cover, I just love Bjork. By the way, I've got to listen to her new album still. I've, I've held off because I didn't know if I was going to do a reaction to it, but uh, yeah, I'm anxious to listen to the new Bjork that came out late last year. All right, number six. Uh, in our top six, we have four anthologies. Because they're anthologies, they're bests of. And number six, we're now in five-star territory, The Fall, which is probably on here too. I think there's one, possibly two fall songs on here. But this is 50,000 Fall Fans Can't Be Wrong, 39 Golden Greats. And this album cover is a spoof of, uh, well, maybe not a spoof, more of a tribute to uh, Elvis Presley. Um, but 50,000 Fall Fans Can't Be Wrong, this is a double CD, and I think they're worthy of two CDs. 39 songs by The Fall. Not everybody's cup of tea for sure. Mark E. Smith. Very unusual singer, but I love The Fall. And there's a, the guy who wrote, we have one record store here in this town, and my friend Tim, he loves The Fall. We, we totally agree on this band. How I Wrote Elastic Man and <laughs> Cruiser's Creek and, you know, I... I listen to this, I just don't get tired of it. It's 39 songs and, and there's so much variety and it's so weird, weird and wonderful. I love the fall. Not sure how many of my uh, subscribers here and people watching this um, are really familiar with the fall because my audience is mostly under 35. You might not be familiar with them. Uh, but I think they're worth checking out. And this would be the one to go to, 50,000 Fall Fans. This is a, an anthology covering their entire career. So rest in peace, Marky e. Smith. He died, um, what, maybe three, four, yeah, three, four years ago. Terrific artist. Uh, yeah, just weird. I <laughs> love it. Number five. Well... A rap album, but not what you think. We're going with British rap, The Streets, A Grand Don't Come For Free. Wonderful album. I uh, can't believe how melodic and accessible it is and how emotional it is. Uh, these songs, even though it's fiction, these songs that uh, Mike Skinner writes are, oh, some of them are heart-tugging. He, I think he's underrated, I really do. Um, some people gave this five stars, like The Guardian and Q out of England. It's a concept album, uh, 91 on Metacritic. I totally agree with that. This to me is a five star album. Mike Skinner, and he 
pretty much went downhill from here. He did two great albums and then just kind of started running out of ideas. But this is a home run all the way, every track. I love A Grand Don't Come For Free. And uh, Dry Your Eyes is on here. I, Yeah, Dry Your Eyes and, hmm. Man, it's a good album. Yeah, highly recommended. All right, number four is a uh, anthology of someone I've seen a couple times in concert. And this is the one to own, and it was never done right. There were two anthologies, no, three anthologies done of this band, and none of them were, were right. None of them hit the spot until 2004 when ZZ Top released Rancho Texicano, the very best of ZZ Top, and Rancho Texicano is just a made-up word. Um, the problem with the other anthologies, there were two single disc anthologies, and for me a single disc of ZZ Top is not quite enough. But uh, then when they put out a double one, they remixed everything. I forget what that album was called, but you can't even find it on Spotify. It was so hated. They did this uh, horrible remix of all these tracks, and they weren't authentic at all. And finally, in 2004, this is it. This is everything you need. And because we waited till 2004, we got a little bit more of a career retrospective, so you could get songs like My Head's in Mississippi, which is one of my all-time favorite ZZ Top songs. I'm a sucker for these guys. They were so good. Billy Gibbons, one of the best guitar players in history. Uh, if I made a list of my 100 favorite guitarists, which actually I've tried to do, it's very difficult. Um, but Billy Gibbons probably be, probably be in my top 50. Love him uh, and the whole band. And so rest in peace, Dusty Hill, who left us last year. Uh, Big fan of ZZ Top. This is the one to go to, folks. This is the one to listen to. All right, number three is uh, also a double anthology of the 60s and 70s band, The Animals, Eric Burden and. And it covers, it, it's, it's interesting. I have another anthology that I own that's a Dutch issue. It's a double CD of just The Animals before they became Eric Burden and. And that's really good too, it goes deeper, it's a deep dive into the classic period of the animals. But this one here just covers uh, the whole career, you know, from House of the Rising Sun all the way to Spill the Wine. And, but those Eric Burden and the Animals songs like Sky Pilot and Monterey, I love those songs too. And then you've got Boom Boom and all these great, great, the animals were seminal, absolutely seminal. And Eric Burden's one of the best singers there ever was. And I, I really enjoy this anthology. Uh, it covers a, a wide period and kind of races through. You know, you get just a song here and a song here. It's kind of a survey, but it's really an enjoyable listen. The animals retrospective, I highly recommend this as a entry point and it's really well mastered. Everything sounds fantastic on here. All right, number two is my favorite album of the 21st century. What's it going to be? Not talking about anthologies now, talking about a album that was actually released in 2004. Any guesses? This is it. Arcade Fire, Funeral. My wife bought this and brought it home and played it. And she told me how great it was. It took me a little while to get used to it, but she was right. Uh, she was a high school teacher, so she was pretty hip. And she'd bring home the White Stripes or Arcade Fire, different bands like that, that she'd find about sometimes from her students, sometimes from colleagues. And uh, I have grown to love this album over the years. Every single song is a winner to me. Not everyone likes Arcade Fire, but I sure do. And um, Pitchfork does 9.7, 9.7. 
Metacritic, 90. All music, 5. And I agree. I agree with all the superlatives on this band. You know, they were unusual at the time. Um, they were one of those bands that didn't do a lot of solo, so, soloing. Really, no soloing. Everybody plays together. Uh, but I love their aesthetic. Uh, yeah, Toronto, right? They're from Toronto. Arcade Fire. Mm, funeral. Love it. So what's my number one album going to be? Well, I got to tell you, this was a big surprise for me. I would have guessed this would have been 20 or 25 on my list. But each time I played it, I, I had to be honest with myself. I absolutely love this anthology. And I did not know that I liked this guy as much as I do. Even though I saw him in concert and, I'm, and I've been a fan for years, part of this exercise of going through these albums and playing them and trying to rank them is kind of distilling that thing. And my number one album, it's such a shock to me. I would have never guessed in a million years that this would be my favorite album of 2004. But it's a two-disc anthology, the very best of Jackson Brown. This is perfect. I mean, it's just the perfect songs from each album. You got For a Dancer and The Pretender and uh, the single Somebody's Baby. And, and then just taking some tracks from later in his career. So it's heavy on the, you know, I like this. The, it's heavy on the early period. You know, they pick, you know, maybe four songs per album. And then as it goes through, they start picking three songs and then two songs and then one song. And they're very realistic and open-eyed about it that they go, okay, the early classic Jackson Brown is the best. And then we're just going to give you a few tracks at the end here. It's perfect. It's perfect. I love it. Uh, there's something about Jackson Brown just speaks to me. Uh, he's just a great lyricist and a great singer. And he always touches it. You got the load out and stay. And you've just got every great Jackson Brown song on here and some deeper tracks. You got Take It Easy and everything. And this for me is, you know, I'm not a big Eagles fan, speaking of Take It Easy. I'm just not that crazy about the Eagles. But Jackson Brown, when, you know, when it comes to that Southern California thing, I like Jackson Brown, I like Warren Zevon, and, and I like Fleetwood Mac. And I, I like those bands. I think they're excellent. Not a huge Linda Ronstadt fan, but there are certain Southern California bands that I just think are great. The very best of Jackson Brown. If it surprised you, it surprised me. So thank you for listening in. Like I said, I'm going to do a Spotify playlist. And if you like what we're doing, which is a senior reacting to the new music of the 21st century and occasionally some anthologies of classic rock if they were released in the 21st century, uh, hit that like or subscribe button. And as we say here in Bonita, Mexico, Buen Dia. Thank you.